Hello, this is Neil Bertrand. I was the guest speaker for the Lafayette Genealogical Society on Thursday, January 19th, 2012, and I gave this presentation called My Notable Ancestors. Back in the 1980s, I asked my dad questions about what his father did and so on, and this is where the video starts. Because of these unanswered questions, a desire was sparked in my dad to find out where his ancestors came from and I helped him do research when I could on his side of the family. Just for reference, here are some maps to show you where my dad and mom and their ancestors lived. Then we'll jump into my PowerPoint presentation. Here is the town of Opelousas, which is at the intersection of Interstate 49 and Highway 190. Going over to the west, down Highway 190, you get to a little town called Lawtel, which is right here. If you go a little bit further to Highway 103, the Prairie Run Highway, you come to a little community called Mallet. And here we have a little community called Prairie Run. Well, Daddy's uh, ancestors came from this area, all around Lawtel, Prairie Run, and Mallet. Now, Mama's ancestors were from the area between Grant Coteau and, let me see if I can find it here, between Grant Coteau and Orneville. Here is Grant Coteau right here. And their property was around the area of Bayou Fusilet, where Bayou Borbo and Bayou Fusile meet. This is where their ancestral property was that Spanish land grants were given to my ancestors. Mama grew up in a little community called Prairie de Farm, which is around here. She, Orneville is here and Leonville is up here. This is where she graduated high school. All right, so on with the presentation. Well, what did your daddy do? And because I didn't know anything, uh, my, my his daddy died when he was eleven. He died in 1931. And so uh, he told me that uh, well, he had a grocery store, he had a saloon, he owned a cotton gin, he owned farmland, he owned cattle. And so what about his daddy? And was said, told me his name, and he owned farmland and cattle. And what about his daddy? Well, I don't know who his daddy was. So that is what put the bug in my daddy to start researching the ancestors. And he started by using Father Hebert's books in the Alcusis Library. And so he, I, I helped him a little bit at the time. And then when he passed away in 2000, I inherited all of his research, filled up a, a box that big. And so I bought Family Tree Maker, and I started typing in names and of ancestors and all the information that he had. He didn't even touch my mom's side of the family. He just did the Bertrand side. And so he grew up in the Lawtel area, a little community called Mallet. Mama grew up in what they call Prairie de Farm, which is between Grand Coteau and Arnold. And uh, so with that introduction, I'll go ahead and get started. The I guess you'd say not quite the first Bertrand, but the one that uh, I guess started it off in the New World is Gilles Joseph Bertrand from Saint Brieuc, Brittany, France. He came to Canada as a soldier in the French Army, and he settled in the Montreal area. His son Amal Bertrand, born in 1739 in Montreal came to Louisiana, settled near Plaisance, 
He was a former, and he's buried in the St. Andrew Catholic Church Cemetery. And he fought in the Galvez expedition, was a corporal, and he is listed in the Opelousas Militia of 1777. Amab married twice. Each wife was named Anastasia. Now, if you talk about a rat's nest, and trying to separate out which wife has which kids, talk about a, a, a challenge. But I plowed through it and I figured it out. Well, a mob had a son named Lewis, and Lewis, he was the first one to come from the Plaisance area to the Lautel area, and that's where they spread out from there and had their, their families. So Amab's father-in-law, okay, his second father-in-law was an Oquan. He was Claude Oquan from France. He left France with his family aboard the ship La Ville d'Archangel in 1785. Amab's son, Pedro Bertrand's birth document is right here and signed by Father Pedro Zamora. Now, if you're familiar with Father Hebert's books, you'll see Pedro Zamora's name in there quite a bit. Haven't y'all noticed that? But this is a document written in Spanish that was published in the 1955 edition of the History of St. Landry Parish published by the Daily World. So to me this is a treasure that, you know, when I found this, I said, wow, this is amazing. So I have some photos of Amal Bertrand's grandsons, Homer, Louis Ozem, and Auguste. And the first two are of Homer and his brother Louis. This was done, of course, in the 1800s. And their youngest brother, Auguste, and his wife, Ernestine Setig, and these are my great-great-grandparents. All right, so now, here is proof of DNA. <laughs> my son, Jeremy, who is right here. <laughs> Can y'all tell that there's a resemblance or not? Okay. A painting that I just showed you, the painting of young Auguste Bertrand, born December 26, 1837. He was the father of Theogene Bertrand, and I'll show you this picture in a second. So he was the father of Theogene. He was the son of Louis, the grandson of Amma. He married first Ernestine Satie in 1857, and secondly, he married Emma Peet. After Ernestine passed away, he married Emma Peet in 1867. He is buried in the Bertrand Family Cemetery near Mallet. During the war between the states, Auguste served in Company F of the 8th Regiment Louisiana Infantry a frontline unit raised in St. Landry Parish that fought gallantly in Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. He was severely wounded in the Battle of the Wilderness in Northern Virginia in May of 1864 and was unable to rejoin his unit. He was sent home to recover from his wounds. And this is, these are the parents of his wife. These are uh, Dominic Contini Satig and his wife Marguerite Hermance Sachery. Auguste married Ernestine. Her dad, Dominic Contini Satig, he was born of Italian parents. They, the parents, lived in southern Italy. But uh, uh, Dominic was born in 1800 in Holland. He spoke Dutch. He owned the building which we know now as the Steamboat Warehouse Restaurant in Washington, and he was the St. Landry Parish tax assessor from 1869 to 1874. And this, I don't know if you've ever been to that restaurant, but this was uh, 
the building that he owned as a warehouse for cotton and other products. Ernestine Satig's mom was Marguerite Herman Sashry of the Tony Sashry family. So we are related to, the, to that group, that family. These are my great grandparents, Theogene Bertrand and his wife, Gadrat Entrepon. This is the house that Theogene built. It's in uh, the Lotel area, and it's still standing. This is his son, my grandfather, Numa, and his wife, Lenore Ledoux. Numa owned a cotton gin, grocery store, saloon, cattle, and farms. The lumber for the house that he built was brought from the Kinder area by ox cart. They loaded up several ox carts with all the lumber and drove the oxen from the Kinder Oakdale area all the way to the Locktail area. I don't know if you can see his hairdo. <laughs> Three rows of curls like that. And I guess that's where I get my curly hair from. And this is his first wife, Lydia Lafleur. This is a certificate that I have in my possession for the Lawtail Gin Company that he was co-owner with, with, with J.P. Barnett. Mr. Barnett started what we know as Luana Foods in uh, the, the oil, coffee seed oil business. This was the house that he built. This is a snowfall, uh, a rare snowfall in that area. Now his wife, Lenore Ledoux, these are her parents. Ducoudre Ledoux, and her name is Pauline Fructel. These are my parents. My dad was in World War II, uh, Curtis Bertrand and my mama, Ed May, from the Prairie Farm area. That's dad and me. Any resemblance there? So if you ever want to see me in a coat and tie, take a good look. It's about as far as you'll get. <clears throat> okay, now this is the Bertrand uh, chart. We have on the right side a model. Anastasi Boquan, we have Ledu and Pete and Contini, which is the father of Dominic Contini Satie. He married an Ewald from Holland, Louis Sashri and Catherine Boshurdy. And then on uh, the other side, the maternal side, we have Entrepont, Eamon, Longbois, Janson, Fontenot, Brignac, Pete. Uh, now, the Pete, this guy had so many kids and they scattered throughout my Bertrand lines. I mean, another rat's nest that was just unimaginable. <coughs> so, here we have Francois Pete, who married Marie Joseph Thibodeau. Francois Pete, who married Joseph, Marie Joseph Thibodeau, who had another child. Uh, Francois, Marie again, VJ who married a Cotoir, Joubert, and another Pete, and Ledoux and a Rougeau. Then my grandmother's side, we have Ledoux, Rondeau, Rougeau, De Mouy, Pete, Doucet, Thibodeau, Saunier, and McDaniel. Now this John Peter McDaniel came from Ireland, and he married a Cochrane. We have Watson, which is also Irish, Francois Pete and Marie Joseph again, and Guillory and a Fontenot. And Broussard, Sadat, Benoit, Trahon, and Pete and Thibodeau again. Pete and Thibodeau again, Bellevue, Henry Pierre de Bellevue Fontenot, Doucet, Vigée, Lefebvre, Cotoir, and Coulouret. Now, on my mother's side, we have the Steli and the Roban clan. 
This is my mother's paternal grandfather, Joseph Adolf Steli. He is on the front porch of his daughter's house, Bernadette Steli Marx in Barnerville. He died in 1951. And thinking of him and the stories of the, you know, what I grew up with was that my mother's family were all pure Kajak. Because they spoke Kajak. They didn't know English until they had to go to school and learn English. That's what my my mother had to experience in 1930 uh, something. She was born at 25. So she didn't know any English until she went to school. <clears throat> so he was my mama's grandfather. He helped build St. Charles College in Grecoco. His ancestor, Jean Bartstelli and Marie Christine Edelmeyer, started the Stelly clan in Louisiana. Jacob Miller and Marie Ann Thiessen, who are my ancestors, started the Miller clan. And I have two Spanish uh, surnames in my lineage, and they are Quibido and Castile. The Steli people came from Germany, lived on the German co coast near Edgard uh, and Destrahan, which is right across the river, were lured from that flood-prone farmland by the Spanish government, and they were each given 192 acres of free land in Priority Farm between Grand Coteau and Orneville. And we have Steli, Miller, Quipido, Recuron, Moran, Marx, Leger, Savoy, Marx again, Miller, Lalonde, Wilkes, Foray, Jean, Ritter, and Steli again. Now his wife, the man I just showed you on the porch, was Marie Olivia Miller, my mother's paternal grandmother. She was the wife of Joseph Adolf Steli. Captain Charles Alexander Barre was her ancestor. He owned a large plantation at the confluence of Bayou Catawba and Bayou Tesh. The town of Port Barry is named for him. And on uh, Miller's side, we have George Miller, Catherine Ritter, Andrews Savoy, Marx Miller Steli, Ella Meyer, Marx Jr. Catherine Miller, Steli, Ritter, Jacob Close, Jean Parra, Charles Alexander Barre, who married Miss DeQueer. John Close was born in Nelson County, Kentucky. The family name of Close was later changed to Claus, which we know around here there are several of those. John Close married Ephrosine Barre, the daughter of Charles Barre and Magdalene DeQueer in 1810. They had 12 children. John Close died in 1865 at his plantation in St. Landry Parish at the age of 81. He lived in the parish for six years. In 1815, he fought at the Battle of New Orleans under Andrew Jackson as captain of a militia company. He eventually earned the rank of major. Euphrosine Barre was born 1788 died on April 4th, 1853, and I got this from my friend David Lonco. John Close and Euphrosine Barre owned a large plantation on Bayou Little Tesh in the Notneyville area. The plantation was named P.T. Bois Plantation. Euphrosine Barre received a large tract of land from her father in the Notneyville area. This is where John and Euphrosine built their plantation house when they married. Besides the crops grown on the plantation, John Close also operated a steam-powered sawmill on Bayou Tesh, according to the census of 1850. Now the Lalonde clan, Guillaume Lalonde of Trois-Rivières, Canada, born 1756, after Le Grand Derangement, Guillaume and his brother Jean-Baptiste left Canada to join their Acadian brethren in Louisiana. 
They came by way of the Great Lakes down the Mississippi River to Point Coupee, where they settled for a few years. Both their fathers-in-law were commanding the Atakapa Post. One was a major, one was the commandant. The descendants of Guillaume and Jean-Baptiste eventually settled along Bayou Teche in St. Landry Parish. Now we get to Theodore Robin, my mom's maternal grandfather. Francois Simon Dossité Robin was a doctor of law and medicine in France. His son, Louis Joseph Francois Robin, uh, his name appears all over Father Hebert's volumes as a witness to marriages, etc., and as L.J.F. Robin. He built the home on the Leonville Road at Robin Bridge. And the Robin people are Robin, Marie-Anne Tisserand de Montservo, Stelly, who married a Berthelot, a Castile, who married a Stelly, Andre Nero, who married Miss Prudhomme, Guillaume Lalon, who married Wilkes. Then we have the Saison group. We have Saison, Bergeron, Saison, Bergeron again, uh, Rayfield, and ATA. Now we even see right here, we have and Alexis Saison, who also married a Saison. So that's how that works. Here's a photo that appeared in the 1955 edition of the History of St. Andrew Parish. Um, my ancestor, uh, L.J.F. Robin, his wife, who is Emily Stelly, holding their child, Theodose Robin, and Emily Stelly was, of course, part of the Stelly group, and their son is also my direct ancestor. Louis Joseph Francois Robin, his wife, his wife is Marie Emily Stelly, holding their th son Theodose, my direct ancestor. She is granddaughter of Jean George Stelly, who came from Germany. Michel Prudhomme was also serving under my ancestor, Corporal Amable Bertrand. Hold on a second, let me back up a second here. Oh, yes, get one. Uh, General Robin, as it turns out, he was not a general, but attained the rank of captain during the War of 1812 while fighting at the Battle of New Orleans. And I think the confusion comes in where he looks like he's dressed as a general, but I was told that they had the, uh, the right to design their own uniform, and so that's how that looked. And uh, I guess the writer of the article uh, thought that he looked like a general, so she put that on the top of the picture. So he fought in the Battle of, uh, War Battle of New Orleans. The painting was destroyed in a fire. The only photograph that survived is, was taken by the Daily World for their history of St. Andrew Parish. Michel Prudhomme, another ancestor, was also serving under my ancestor, Corporal Amab Bertrand, who I mentioned at the beginning, and was also a godfather to one of Amab's kids. Michel donated 100 acres of land with timber for the building of St. Landry Catholic Church and along with the nearby cemetery. He owned the Ring Rose Mansion on Prudhomme Lane next to Opelousas General Hospital. And that Ring Rose Mansion is still there. And I went to school across the street at Academy of the Immaculate Conception. So I had no idea when I was playing at recess or running at PE that I was running on my ancestors' land. So unless you start doing your ancestry and finding your, who's in your, what kind of nuts you have in your family tree, you want to know stuff like this. Now we get to the Nero family. Andre Nero was the eldest son of Jean-Baptiste Nero and Magdalene Molyneux. 
He was born in New Orleans on February 25, 1770. When Jean-Baptiste Nero died, Magdalene Molyneux married Antoine L'Oncle Sr. around 1777. He moved the family first to St. Martinville and later to Prairie Grove Chevreuil, I guess it is. Chevreuil. Huh? Chevreuil. Okay. Between Leonville and Honorville. Andre Nero married Marie Louise Prudhomme, the daughter of Michel Prudhomme and Catherine Rathenorum of Opelousas. With his father-in-law's political connections, Andre Nero was appointed syndic for Prairie Grove Chevreux. Now, what's a syndic? His duties were many and varied, but essentially he served as a liaison or a go-between between his neighbors and the public officials who held jurisdiction over Prairie Gros Chevreux. Nero became a wealthy planter. When he died, he owned several plantations in St. Landry and St. Martin parishes and over a hundred slaves. He had only one son who died in infancy. The rest were all girls. Therefore, the family name has ceased to exist in this part of Louisiana. Joseph del Castillo, one of my uh, Spanish ancestors, and Marie Agnes du Chassin, her mother was an Indian from Kaskaskia, Illinois, and that's about all I know about them. Saison Street in Port Barry was named after my Saison ancestors. This is my ancestor, Bertil Mallet, wife of Theodore Robin, my mama's grandmother. Bertil Mallet, her maternal ancestors descend from Jean George Stelly, who came from Germany. Famous explorers Pierre and Paul Mallet from Montreal are not direct ancestors, but may be cousins because they were both. Uh, from the Montreal area. And so the, the brothers, Paul and Pierre, founded the community of Mallet, where my dad was raised near Voltaire. And her lineage is Mallet, Delat, Marcel, Harrington, French, uh, Jean George Stelly, and Marie Miller. Um, Toussaint Quibodeau, Moreau, Mayer, Stelly again, Boutin, and Feller, which I think probably uh, was pronounced Taylor at the time, but this Feller name is what became the Taylors in the Hornerville area. And these are my mom's parents, her dad and mom with their old car, and I believe that's my mother sitting in the little chair. And this is them back in the 60s. You see that old car, that old Chevy in the background. And I'm Tiffany. Thank you.